Now, we want to use this anatomy and physiology to identify the causes of type 1 and type 2 diabetes mellitus. Now, in type 1 diabetes mellitus, there is an autoimmune reaction. And what the body does, the body's own immune system starts destroying its own beta cells. Now, the immune system is supposed to destroy bacteria and viruses. That's good. It's not supposed to destroy its own tissues. But sometimes the immune system makes a mistake and it seems to think that its own body tissues are bacteria or viruses and it destroys them and it does a very good job of it. It's a tragic mistake. It's uh, death by friendly fire. Um, it's, it's pathological, of course. It's not supposed to happen. So what happens is the body's own immune system destroys, over time, all of its own beta cells. This means that in type 1 diabetes mellitus, all of the beta cells are, destro are destroyed, so we get an absolute deficiency of insulin. So in type 1 diabetes, there is no insulin, therefore there's no insulin to stimulate the insulin receptors. Therefore, the glucose transporter molecules do not rise to the surface of the cell. This means that the blood sugar levels are going to rise. The blood sugar levels are going to increase. And the World Health Organization suggests that when blood glucose levels in a fasting blood sample get to 7 millimoles, or when in a random sample of blood, the blood glucose levels get to 11.1 .1 millimoles, that patient has actually got diabetes. So in type 1 diabetes, the beta cells are destroyed. Because the beta cells are destroyed, there's no insulin. Therefore, the insulin receptors are present and the insulin receptors are perfectly healthy in type 1 diabetes, but there's no insulin to stimulate them. Therefore, the GLUT molecules don't go to the surface. Therefore, there's a hyperglycemia. And this is the great irony in type 1 diabetes. There's a huge amount of glucose. We've got a massive hyperglycemia. We've got way more glucose than we would like. But just across this cell membrane, just across this phospholipid cell membrane, the mitochondria are inside without, without any glucose. That's type 1. Now, type 2 diabetes begins with the insulin receptors. It's a disease primarily of the insulin receptors. Type 2 diabetes, there are reduced numbers of viable insulin receptors. And that's going to put the blood sugar levels up. So in the early stages of type 2 diabetes, Actually, there's going to be more insulin than normal, but there is not enough insulin receptor proteins to utilise that insulin. It begins with the insulin receptors. And it's only the combination of the insulin and the insulin receptors that stimulate the glucose transporter molecules to come to the surface of the cell. So in type 1, the problem was lack of insulin. In type 2... The problem is lack of insulin receptors. Either way, you don't get the glucose transporter molecules going to the surface. Therefore, you get a hyperglycemia. And in type 2 diabetes, the diagnostic criteria would be the same. Greater than 7 millimoles of glucose in a fasting sample. More than 11.1 .1 millimoles of glucose in a random sample. So type 1, destruction of the beta cells. Type 2, loss of the insulin receptors. But as type 2 develops, well, let's go back a bit. When there's a lack of insulin receptors, the insulin, there's more insulin produced to try and stimulate the insulin receptors. But of course, we know there aren't insulin receptors. The insulin receptors are 
abnormal and reduced in numbers. So the pancreas tries to produce more insulin to compensate. Because as the blood glucose levels rises, this is detected by the beta cells and they produce more insulin to compensate. So initially in type 2 diabetes, there's going to be increased amounts of insulin, actually. But then over time in type 2 diabetes, the beta cells are actually going to wear out and there'll be reduction in beta cell mass and over time in type 2 diabetes the amount of insulin will also be reduced. This is why eventually patients with type 2 diabetes might need insulin. So even though the disease starts with the insulin receptors, eventually the beta cells are also going to be affected because of the obligatory high output of insulin which is really going to wear out the beta cells. So in essence, that's the difference between the two types. Type 1, autoimmune eradication of the beta cells. Type 2, progressive loss of the insulin receptor molecules initially, but later causing problems because of the wearing out of the beta cells as well. Type 1 and type 2 diabetes mellitus.